Welcome to Teacher Alma's channel. This is the second video lesson in the series of videos about properties of matter. If you haven't seen the first video lesson, which is about mass and weight, click the link in the description box below. In this video, we will learn about volume, another general property of matter. Let us begin. Matter takes up space. A brick layer stacks bricks on top of each other to build a wall. No two bricks can occupy the same place because the matter in each brick takes up space. The amount of space that matter in an object occupies is called the object's volume. The bowling ball and the basketball approximately have the same amount of space. Therefore, the two balls have about the same volume. Although the basketball is hollow, it is not empty. Air fills up the space inside the basketball. Air and other gases take up space and have volume too. Take note that if an object occupies more space, it has greater volume. If an object occupies less space, it has less volume. Take a look at this picture. Which between the bed and the drawer takes up more space? If your answer is the bed, you are correct. Because the bed occupies more space compared to the space occupied by the drawer. There are different ways to find the volume of an object. For objects that have well-defined shapes such as a brick or a ball, you can take a few measurements of the object and calculate the volume. A rectangular box, for example, has a length, a width, and a height that can be measured. Find the volume of the box, multiply the three values, length, width, and height. If the measure of the length, the width, and the height of the box is in centimeters, the volume has a unit of centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, or cubic centimeters. In this example, the length is 12 centimeters. The width is 3 centimeters. And the height is 5 centimeters. If you multiply these three values, the volume of this box is 180 cubic centimeters. The measurements are meters, the unit of volume is cubic meters. All measurements must be in the same unit to calculate volume. Other regular solids such as spheres and cylinders also have formulas for calculating volumes. Now, let us say that you would like to find out how much volume does this object have. Take note that this object is an irregularly shaped object. Instead of calculating the volume using a formula, we can make use of the fact that two objects cannot be in the same place at the same time. The volume of an irregularly shaped object can be measured by water displacement method. So how is the water displacement method done? Add water to a graduated cylinder. Note the volume of the water by reading the water level in the cylinder. Submerge the irregularly shaped object in the water. Because the object and water cannot share the same space, 
the water is displaced or moved upward. Note the new volume of the water with the object in it. Subtract the volume of the water before you added the object from the volume of the water and the object together. The result is the volume of the irregularly shaped object. Here are the takeaways from this video. Always remember that volume is the space that matter occupies. To find the volume of a regularly shaped object, measure the length, width, and height. Use the water displacement method for finding the volume of an irregularly shaped object. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Watch out for the upcoming video lessons about the other properties of matter.